Um, we do have a pretty full itinerary for you today. I um, want to kind of talk about um, the, the mood for this. Um, of course, everybody should have masks on. You're sitting really, really tight to one another, so make sure you have those on correctly and properly. Um, but the last assembly that we had with the um, Veterans Day, the mood is a lot different. Of course, uh, it's a little bit more solemn. And this, uh, this is a little bit different, a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, maybe, maybe not lighthearted, but it's more of a celebration than anything else, and our guest speaker will model that uh, perfectly. It might, I mean, we are set to be uh, to dismiss uh, on the schedule at 12.47, but we, if it goes long, it goes long. So we will stay here then, and if you are late to fifth period, then, uh, then that's on me, so we'll be able to do that. So uh, without uh, further delay, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Braden Poe and Mia Cochran, your president, vice president uh, of the class, to get you started. Welcome to the 2022 Martin Luther King Jr. National Holiday Assembly. We have come here today to celebrate Dr. King's life and accomplishments. Too often, Dr. King's holiday is equated with a black holiday, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Dr. King lost his life as he prepared to link arms with both black and white in fighting for justice. Each year, the junior class, as a part of our U.S. history curriculum, takes part in a brief look at the role that Dr. King had in changing the racial outlook for many of us in the United States. While there were many high points in the Civil Rights Movement, many feel that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was the greatest achievement of all because of how it has continued to influence the United States and all of its citizens. Its immediate impact was most dramatically felt by African Americans, but the truth is that equality and justice are colorblind, and these protections now enshrined in American law are just another step towards our nation being true to the ideals spelled out in the Declaration of Independence. Many things that we take for granted now are in place as a result of Dr. King's efforts. I would now like to introduce a chorus of FC students who have each volunteered to read a short passage from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. This particular speech is surely his most well-known speech, repeated countless of times as a window into the American dream of justice and equality. King reportedly worked on the words of his speech up to the last minute, but they are eloquent and meaningful, and they have joined an elite club of famous speeches given by American leaders during moments of national crisis. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream that is deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, the state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hear out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood.
with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. Stone Mountain of Georgia, let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, we allow freedom to ring, and we let it ring, ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state in every city. We will speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, we will be able to join in the hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. I would now like to invite you to listen as the Floyd Central Acapella Choir sings a piece known as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Tribute. This collection of songs, Bomb and Gilead, The Battle Hymn of the Republic, and We Shall Overcome, all provided great inspiration to the thousands of Americans who participated in the Civil Rights Movement, especially in moments when success didn't seem to be as important as survival.
Every now and then I ask myself, what is it that I would want to know? I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that I tried to be right on the work question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. And I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. And if you want to say that I was a drug major, say that I was a drug major for justice. Say that I was a drug major for peace. I was a drug major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not happen. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out a
Could we give them a round of applause? I would like to take this opportunity now to introduce today's speaker. Our guest is Norman Seawright, Jr. In addition to being the father of two Floyd Central graduates, Mr. Seawright is quite accomplished in his own right. He is a top 10% graduate of Moss Point High School, class of 1977. He went on to attend and graduate from the University of Mississippi in 1982. After college, he served in the United States Air Force before being hired by UPS. In early 2000s, Mr. Seawright became an associate minister at St. Stephen's Church in Louisville, Kentucky. He holds an MBA and a Master's of Science in Leadership from Grand Canyon University as well. Please join me in a warm welcome for Mr. Norman Seawright, Jr. To me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll try it again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is that all you got? I, I, I played football. I went to Ole Miss on a football scholarship, and I had people who just yelled at me, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for that introduction. Appreciate it. It's great to be here. Um, again, I, I'm honored for this opportunity, and I'll try not to be long winded, even though if you know Baptist preachers, all of us are long winded. Um, both my sons did graduate from Floyd Central. Uh, Dr. Hill and I really, uh, uh, Wilman, appreciate uh, the welcome. Uh, when Mr. Stevens contacted me last week, I had to adjust some of, some of my schedules. Um, I, I have changed jobs again at UPS. I don't know. I didn't tell you that, but it's. I, I don't even know what my title is anymore. I'm just. I just do stuff out there, and I and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm still flying, I still uh, teach, I still do evaluations, but I'm also in, involved with pilot hiring now at UPS and some other things that uh, we're developing there. So it's great to see you, it's great to be here. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. You know, old people have to drink a lot. Did you know that? Oh, old people always have some water or something, and this is this is lemon tea with honey. Uh, it's not it's, it's not spiked. I don't want you guys to get that impression. It's, but um, I, <laughs> I I I I do a lot of talking. I do a lot of singing, and and I have to keep my voice, you know, right. All right. Yes. So let me ask you something. Let me, let me do. Uh, how are you all feeling this morning? Good. Good? So, so I, I often try to do something to break the ice with young people when I speak to you. Uh, all of you leaders, you can say yes, Captain. Yes. Uh, so are, are all of you, so leaders make good followers, don't they? Yes. Very good. So, so let me try this. I, I'm going to test you. I, I, I teach, so I have to do that. It's just part of who we are. So when I say get it, you say got it. Get it? Get it? When I say got it, you say get it. Got it? Got it? Get it, get it, got it? Y'all didn't get it. You wanna try again? You sure you ready? Are you ready? Because because some of you not speaking. I I I know voices. I used to direct, you know, a hundred voice choir. So I, I know when people are not talking to me. So when I say get it, you say got it. Get it? Get it? When I say got it, you say get it. Got it? Got it? Get it, get it, got it? Got it, got it, get it? Get it, get it, got it, get it? Give yourselves a hand. You did great. So, Dr. King. You know, I, I, you guys have done an eloquent job. Thank you this, for this morning. Um, Dr. King, we wonder, who was this guy? 
I mean, I, you guys were not around when uh, the civil rights movement began and all of this happened, but who really is, was, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? <clears throat> um, you know that he was the son of a Baptist minister. He himself was also a minister. He was also known around the world that he was a champion for justice and peace and righteousness and equality for all. And in a word, if you want to just describe him, you can simply say he was a humanitarian. That's who he was. So in recognition of his sacrifice and his contributions and to freedom and equality, we now pause to celebrate his legacy. And that legacy is one of service. Somebody say service. Service. Very good. Thank you. To mankind, regardless of race or creed. So at the age of 25, now you think about that. All of you, you guys are like 17 years old? Is that right? Yes. That they're about 15, 16, 17? At the age of 25, he completed his doctorate degree at Boston University. And he could have simply stayed up north and been there and lived an easy life. But he, did, he chose to come back to the hotbed of the South. And in the South, arriving in Montgomery, Alabama, he began his involvement with the Civil Rights Movement by answering the call to lead the Montgomery Bus Boycott of 1955. And I know some of your parents were not even born then. But that's when, and this guy was only 25 years old. And he had this mission placed upon him. But in service to mankind, Dr. King, he sought to advance the cause of freedom and equality through nonviolent means. Now, that was very unpopular during those times. Because anytime people wanted to get something done, they resorted to violence. And so Dr. King came with a different mindset and a different strategy of using nonviolence. And though he, he championed that need for change in America in the midst of racial tension and division, he led this championship by example, in a peaceful, in a peaceful manner, through peaceful tactics, and sometimes that same peace was not afforded to him. But he didn't lose sight of his mission. He didn't lose sight of what he was called to do. He did it anyway. All right? You ever, you ever, you ever get up in the morning? I know a lot, everybody don't like to come to school, do they? You don't like to come to school, but, but you got to get up and come anyway, right? Oh, oh, y'all don't? I, oh, okay, so I'm 6'2", weigh about 238 or so. My mother is 5'11". I wasn't always 6'2". She was always 5'11". And if ever I decided that I didn't want to get up and go to school, I got a whooping. Y'all don't know what that is, do you? Y'all know what a whooping is? Y'all Y'all, now this boy is Central High School. Y'all don't know what the world whooping is. I, I got a whooping. And I only got about five of them in my life because my mother, again, I'm, I, was, I was not always 6'2", but she had always been 5'11". Okay? And I wasn't always 200 plus pounds. She was always 185 plus. And she could whoop me any time she wanted to. But I got up and I got out and I did what I was supposed to do, right? And, and that's what Dr. King did. In spite of all the negativism that came his way, he continued on in that quest. So through his dedication and his leadership, the civil rights movement, the other civil rights movement, America took notice. And America began making strides toward justice and freedom and equality for everybody. And because of his leadership, we arrived at the integration of city buses in Montgomery. And most notably, you guys heard uh, the choir and some of you recite Dr. King's the I Have a Dream speech. It was credited for influencing the, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. <clears throat> but in his service, he sacrificed his own safety to secure the safety of others. 
Now he sought justice. He sought justice for all amidst the injustice inflicted upon him. And he, he continued to dream. How many of you still dream? Right? In the nighttime. Well, night times are good. Day times are good. But dreaming, dreaming. Never let anybody steal your dreams. Say, say this with me. I will never oh, no. let anybody's <laughs> negative opinion of me <laughs> become my reality. <laughs> now, I want you to remember that because I'm going to challenge you. Here we are in 2022. So Dr. King's commitment to peace should inspire all of us to remain at peace with one another. Did I say that time? Okay. And because of his efforts, American, African Americans, minorities, are no longer blatantly denied the opportunities of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. One can look around and you can see that life, life is a little better for a lot of us. Amen? Amen. And we can all dream, and we can all work towards those dreams without laws that restrict us from uh, because of the color of our skin or because of our ethnicity or our national origin. We can, we can pursue those dreams. His dream is still alive. But I've got to ask you, what is your dream? What are you going to do? When you look back, you guys are going to be graduating here in, in a year or so. And when you think about your legacy, 21 years from now, when you're celebrating your 20th year high school reunion, what will you have contributed to society? I, 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 I ask that question because I, I want to challenge you. I know she, I can't remember her name, but she read one of Dr. King's speeches about the end of the drum major instinct was a sermon. And I want to recite some of that to you because I want you to have the impact of knowing. Have you ever, if you've never faced death, the impact of knowing that someone wants to kill you and someone does not want you to be on this earth, but you still continue on, that is very taxing. But Dr. King, that he had been threatened, he'd been ostracized, but he still came up with this. And, and I'll recite that and hopefully I can sit down. Or not. Or I'm going to. But it goes like this. You know, we all Think about that time when we will be victimized with what is life's final common denominator. That's something we call death. We all think about it. And every now and then I think about my own death and I think about my own funeral. And I don't think of it in a morbid sense. And every now and then I ask myself, what is it that I would want said? And I leave the word to you this morning. If any of you are around, when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then, I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or 400 other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention on that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I want you to be able to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that I tried to be right on the war question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who were naked. I want you to be able to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drunk major, 
Say that I was a drum major for justice, that I was a drum major for peace, and that I was a drum major for righteousness, and all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things in life to believe, leave behind, but I just want to leave a committed life behind, and that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian, Lord, if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, Jesus, I want to sit on your right or your left side, but not for any selfish reasons. I want to sit on your right or your left side, not in terms of political kingdom or ambition. I just want to be there, excuse me, in love and in justice and in truth and in commitment so that we can bring to this old world a new world. What will your legacy be? be a little bit different. Um, once again, uh, I could sit there, and I know we, we stayed a little bit late here today. Um, I could I could sit here and listen. I could listen to him all day. Uh, love that stuff. I know it's it's different, uh, sort of sort of sermon like, and I know uh, maybe a lot of a lot of people aren't used to that sort of feedback that you would get. So, for example, I'm, I was raised Catholic, which means that uh, the only audience participation that takes place in a Catholic church is scripted. So uh, we don't we don't get to do that very often. So. Um, I want to appreciate, I want to just uh, convey how much we appreciate uh, what uh, Mr. Seawright does for us. He's done a lot for us, FC, as well as outside, uh, and what a fantastic um, presentation that was. So thanks again. I'd also like to thank the choir for theirs, and I know um, we have become almost... Uh, we're, we're, we're used to the, the great performances that they have, but I would challenge you uh, to find a better choir anywhere than, than that. I don't care if it's got Beyonce, Lizzo, it doesn't matter who's got in the choir. It's fantastic. Uh, it's really good. So I want to thank Mrs. Hampton uh, for her. Uh, yes, I would put those to it. Yes, I would put our choir against any of those. Um, also like to thank the, um, the speakers, speakers that did in between. That was really good. The idea was to get a lot of different voices up here um, and kind of pause in between to let those words sink in because it is it is a heavy speech um, it's very poetic definitely but uh, it takes a lot to think about uh, what those words what those words are actually saying also like to thank Braden Mia uh, for hosting this we appreciate uh, their efforts there thank you okay, we'll okay and then of course thank you for your uh, for your kind uh, attention and all of that and I would um, of course going forward like to challenge you uh, to think about this this whole holiday and what it is uh, that it means it's very important uh, to a lot of people and I think um, our our Highlander pledge um, about how we treat each other is very relevant when it comes to that um, because that was born uh, from that you can kind of trace the, the words the ideas back to uh, civil rights movement and all of that and if you'd like an explanation of that I'd be happy to give it to you so once again I want to go want to go forward take the words that uh, Mr. C. Wright said as well as the message of, of what the day of Martin Luther King Day means uh, and move forward.